you get our information all the time. I want to see your ID. And of course, they arrested us, took all of our videos. Uh, but video we're too cameras, dumb to actually erase them. Too dumb to actually erase them. Took everything we had. It was on live stream. I kept saying, this is being live streamed. People already see this. This is being live streamed. This is on air to millions of people. And they told us if we came back, we'd be put in a military detainment center. For me, going on into a parking lot, I couldn't even get to their HQ. Went to their parking lot. But if lot. you were ISIS, they would give you weapons. Yeah, if I was a, if I was an undocumented migrant, I'd probably be let in immediately. But the whole point is, we the point do is, the, these people are taking down America. Exactly, we do these stupid, it's a silly things takeover. to we're, make a point. We're an open, free society. They are just carving us up, and we're just here showing. What a joke it is, exactly. We're just here desperately trying to get people to become aware of are we land of the chumps, home of the schmucks, or are we land of the free, home of the brave, Anthony? Exactly. It's, 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 a, it's a stunt to show what they're doing in a more abrupt way where this actually happens in a way that you can see it. We walk in, they get upset, but your information is being stolen and you're not upset about it, right? We go in there, they get upset. We go in there and they freak out that we're at Google and that we dare even record even record anything uh, they do, but they can record everything we do, and that's fine. Just like the NSA guys, I ask for their ID. They think I'm insane, but they have everything on me that I've ever done in my. We have random life. folks walking by. Sir, do you have a comment? <laughs> no. <laughs> Google has announced they're watching and listening to you over your microphones and camera. Is it the politically correct thing to do to submit to the viewing and but say it's not happening because in a free country they're not watching you, even though they admit they are? Is that the proper mode? Uh, I, I don't have a comment. Not right now. It's just best to submit to the machine takeover. I, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I yeah. agree. I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. Should humans all just commit suicide in mass? <laughs> no, definitely Don't not. Eat tacos and go to bed. I believe in progress. I think we're progressing. We are. Well, the IQs are dropping, and the brain waves are dropping, and the neural tissue is rotting. So we're not progressing I think according. It's three steps forward and two steps back. But I think generally things are progressing. And the people running things, they love us. Uh, no. That's uh, that's Bernie too Sanders abstract. There's too much. Abstract. Bernie Sanders loves us. <laughs> Old Bernie said China has really great uh, babies' rights, uh, infant rights. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you agree with that? I, I've made my statement, and that is all I'm going to say. Because Bernie Sanders is great, but don't back up with Bernie Sanders up. I mean, there's never be what, what about China, like killing 50 million girls, and even including after they're born? You don't even know about that. <laughs> She, she doesn't know. That's a shield against that. And, and so Bernie Sanders is great, and China has the model. Time to go. Hey, bye. Thanks, bye. Good hey, take you, care, man. man. Take care. Be safe. See, it's all funny. Bernie Sanders is going to save us, but China has got great stuff for babies. And then, like, kind of videotape, like you videotape us, we videotape you, like we're intimidated by that. We go up against the New World Order. But see how they've instilled a love of destruction, a love of enslavement in these people? <laughs> well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Jones inside Google. Simply saying, hey, you watch us, we watch you. And we're going to recommend Info Warriors in the next few weeks come down here by the thousands and come in with your phones and do live reports surveilling them. They won't be able to stop the signal. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well. And he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Well, we had Matt Drudge about a month ago in studio, only does an interview every three, four years, and I thought that got me excited. But I'm telling you, Donald Trump is our guest, ladies and gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes or so. And obviously, he is a maverick. He's an original. He tells it like it is. Doesn't read off a teleprompter. Neither do I. He's self-made. This whole media operation that reaches 20 million people a week worldwide, conservatively self-made. That's why I'm so excited. And he joins us from Trump Tower in New York City. He is the leading 2016 Republican presidential contender. Donald Trump um, again joins us. And I've got so many questions, but but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. I, I've got so many questions, but you are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslims celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you, though we've got Dan Rather on video. We've got New York Post. We've got Washington Post. We've got, uh, I mean, what's going on here? Well, I took a lot of heat and I was very strong on it and I held uh, my line and then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of people were calling up my office. I was the other day in Sarasota, Florida and people are in line and we had 12,000 people, which is fantastic. And the people were saying, many of the people from New Jersey, four or five people said, Mr. Trump, I saw it myself. I was there. They talked about Patterson, but they said, I saw it myself, Mr. Trump. I was there. So many people have called in and, and on Twitter, at real Donald Trump, they're all tweeting. So I knew it happened and I held my line and people wanted me to apologize and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. It is. And that same week you were uh, reporting on that fact, we had two different international football games, soccer games, with the Turkish fans and others during the moment of silence uh, for the dead people in, in Paris chanting Allah Akbar and booing. So did that not happen too? Well, that happened and everybody saw it. That was a week ago and the players were out on the field and they couldn't believe it. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. The coach and the managers, they all apologized, but it happened. Look, we, we have to deal with reality. And, you know, it all started because I said, we need surveillance. We need proper surveillance. We have people that truly are evil and they're coming from someplace, and you know sort of where they're coming from, at least the vicinity. 
And I said, we need proper surveillance, whether it's a mosque or any place else. We have to be surveilled and we have to see what's coming at us because we're not going to have a country anymore. Between the weak borders that we have, the pathetic and weak borders where politicians are afraid to do anything about it, uh, between all of what's happening with radical, you know, you, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about, you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. He doesn't want to say it. But you look at what's happening where we have a president that's over there celebrating global warming and trying to get everybody excited about global warming, like that's our number one problem. He considers that to be our number one problem. And our number one problem is what's going on where they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. Uh, it's now in mainstream news, Associated Press and others are reporting that it's a secret deal with Turkey, with the Germans, with Merkel, the, the admitted socialist, to bring in millions of radical Islamists. They admit almost all of them are Sunni that basically invaded Syria. They're getting their butt kicked by the Russians, so now they want to flee up through the north into Turkey. You said months ago, bomb the oil of ISIS, and the, and the mainstream media laughed because you said the sky was blue again. Now the Pentagon says that's the right thing to do. And now you've come out saying, quote, uh, it looks like uh, that Turkey's on the side of ISIS, close quote. Well, that uh, the next day, the Russians released satellite photos documenting that there are literally thousands of trucks coming up to the border at these huge terminals connected to Irgun, the president's son, making billions of dollars total off of this. Again, you're in trouble for saying the sky is blue. Well, I was right about that. I was right in saying in a book that I wrote, you covered it really nicely. I appreciate it. But I wrote a very political book years ago in the year 2000, The America We Deserve. And I said in that book that we better be careful with this guy named Osama bin Laden. I mean, I really study this stuff. I really find it very interesting. And even though I'm a businessman, I find it, I've always found, I've always have been involved in politics. I said, we better be careful with Osama bin Laden. There's a guy named Osama bin Laden. Nobody really knew who he was, but he was nasty. He was saying really nasty things about our country and what he wants to do to it. And I wrote in the book, 2000, two years before the World Trade Center came down, I talked about Osama bin Laden. You better take him out. I said, he's going to crawl under a rock. You better take him out. And now people are seeing that. They're saying, you know, Trump predicted Osama bin Laden, which actually is true. And then two years later, a year and a half later, he knocked down the World Trade Center. And I talked about terrorism and that. That was before terrorism as we know it today. I said, we better be careful. That's going to happen. It's going to be a big thing. And it certainly is a big thing. So with the oil, and I'm glad you brought it up, but as you know, for three years, I've been saying you better take out the oil because if you don't take the oil, it's going to be a problem. So we shouldn't have been in Iraq. But once we got there, the way, Osama, the way we came out was, was horrible. And I said, take the oil. Then we didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil. And as you know, Iran is getting the oil because Iran is going to take over all of Iraq. You know, we, we made one of the worst deals in the history of our world when we gave them $150 billion and virtually we gave them keys to nuclear weapons. The more I research what you've actually said and done, it's amazing. You were the only leading American figure who openly said, do not go to war in Iraq. They had almost, what, 90% votes in Congress for it, bipartisan. You said, don't do it. Iran will take over. Uh, you said, I mean, look, you can say that today, and everybody can say that, but you said that in 2001, 2002, 2003, when it was very unpopular because you'd done your research and had good advisors. How did you know that when almost no one else did? Well, first of all, I'm the most militaristic person there is. I'm going to build the military. If I win, I'm going to make our military so strong, so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets and all of that. But I have to tell you, you have to know if you're going to go to war, you have to do it properly and you have to know what to do. I viewed it as this. Iran and Iraq were the same in terms of strength. And they'd have, they're constantly fighting. That's all they do is they fight, right? They go to war all the time and they'd move 10 feet left, 10 feet right, 10 feet left, then they'd rest. And then they started again four years later. This has been gone on for you know, forever. Years. Forever. And this is the way it is. I said, if you take out Iran or if you take out Iraq, either one, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, we took out Iraq. And by the way, Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. People don't even know that. So we gave, like, incredible. We took out Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. Well, and I said, and you'll know this, and you know this, and I appreciate what you just said, uh, then Iran is going to come in and Iran is going to take over Iraq. And they, they're just taking it over right now. As we speak, they're taking it over. Iran is running Iraq and very soon will be virtually going to be totally running Iraq. 
especially after all of the, you know, the deal we just made, which is the worst. So I said, keep the oil. 